do you like who you are now? And can you compare who you are now to who you used to be when you were Jehovah's Witness? Can you remember what you were like when you were Jehovah's Witness? Do you think maybe you was a touch arrogant? A touch dogmatic? Did you feel as if nobody had an opinion other than your own opinion? That was the only one that mattered? Well, you can answer that yourselves. I can only answer how I feel about this situation. When I look back at myself in the 80s and the 90s to some extent, and I look and I self-examine who I was, I have to say, <laughs> I was arrogant. I was self-opinionated. I was all of those things. I'm just gonna sit down here near my bar Pull up the stool, put this down here, and just sit here for a while and self examine what an absolute prick I must have been. Not in the eyes of the Jehovah's Witnesses, because everyone's the same. You know, you, you live for your field service, getting hours in, it meant everything, didn't it? But to someone that was neutral and someone that was able to look in, and see what kind of person I must have been. They must have thought, that guy is just so aloof. He's just so full of his own self-importance. And yet, I can see that now, but I couldn't see it back then. Because that's how we were groomed. We were groomed to be, or to think of ourselves as something special. That we were no part of the world and so we were better than what was out there. Because that's the instruction, isn't it? That filters down from above. And you sit there and week after week you accept that. That you are the elite and that everyone else is cannon fodder. Am I right? <laughs> that's how I feel uh, at the time. That's exactly what uh, used to go through my mind, that everyone else that was out there who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness was in fact cannon fodder, expendable. I'm just going to put the main light on now. Oh, I've got my bar on tonight. I do put it on in the winter, but no music. I could put some music on, uh, but I just don't really feel like putting music on at the moment. Because uh, I've been working seven days a week, I think to myself, well, may as well, may as well work. There's no point in moping, is there? You know, what has happened has happened. And uh, you just have to get on with it, don't you? But this is it, this is my little setup. Just have a quick look at this. What do you think, peeps? So I've got everything on uh, proper rigs here. Right. This is just my small rig stuff. And uh, there's my HD audio equipment, which is fantastic. Secondary monitor, as well as that monitor. Uh, third camera, and fourth camera. And then there's one, there's another one as well, you know. I can't keep up with the amount of cameras that I've got. It, it just became a bit of a, um, a hobby gone mad. <laughs> gone uh, literally bonkers, really. Uh, if I was to put a figure, a pound sign next to what I've spent in the last two or three years, well, it's got to be about 10 grand on equipment. Um, but it's my hobby now. And uh, if I enjoy it and I'm not hurting anyone, then cut me some slack, eh? Yeah, I uh, happened to have looked at Kevin McPhee. Is it Kevin McPhee? Yeah, have I got that right? Um, is it uh, Dubtown? I really, really enjoyed that Pioneer one he did. Uh, sister Head Strong, I mean that was really funny. The way he was able to just um, pick out a few people as if they were just people that we've known from the past, because that's how they were, isn't it, you know? There were self-righteous ones sat there. Uh, there were ones counting their time. And, uh, and there's one particular one that was sat in that uh, Kingdom Hall that reminded myself of him and uh, it was quite comical when I, when I saw him in his grey little suit his, uh, and his tie 
and his sandy blonde hair. And I thought to myself, bloody hell, what's going on here then? Right, it's just a little check in with you. Um, I'm not going to be doing much uh, filming outside for a bit. You know, weather's pretty shit in it, and uh, he wants to be outside getting cold. So that's why I've decided I'll just set all this up in the house. And I think it's pretty good. I think it'll just be perfect. You know, get the uh, the room nice and warm, set a few cameras up and maybe do a live stream with three or four cameras. But that's, that's another time. That's just something I'm toying with. But I hope everyone's doing all right and that no one's too uh, depressed. Uh, yes, uh, another lawsuit, this time 34, 35 million. Uh, is that Montana? Have I, is that the area? Was it Montana? I think I think that's the area in which uh, I heard over the uh, YouTube. And uh, yeah, it looks as if um, very shortly they will be coming after individual elders because I can see that that's the only way that the court system will have full control. They'll, if that happens, uh, people, if they go after individual elders, and they make them responsible for all their actions, their own missions. I will say that not many people will be reaching out, uh, very few. I mean, would you reach out if you were still there, knowing that if you got a decision wrong, you could find yourself in the courtroom, uh, in the least circumstances and in the most extreme circumstances, you could actually be imprisoned. Would you want to be uh, putting your head on the chopping block if you was a Jehovah's Witness? Well, I certainly wouldn't. But I think that's the way it's going. Um, and I'm going to leave you there. And I shall catch you again at some other stage. So goodbye, everybody. And I hope everybody is in great, great health. And you can find a bit of happiness in this pretty awful world, which is what it is at the moment. It's a pretty awful world. Um, but if you can find a bit of happiness and keep those that are that you love close to you, don't let them stray. Um, why am I telling you this? Because that's what I did. I let a love stray. And uh, I do miss her, I really miss her. But I have to kick myself for my arrogant Jehovah's Witness past for that, for my aloof, um, haughty, dogmatic, and all the horrible, horrible things that I don't like about a person now, and yet that was what I was. Uh, so this is a time for self-evaluation and, um, and to kick my own butt, uh, which is what I do occasionally. I do actually kick my own butt when I think I've done something to hurt someone. And believe me, I have hurt many, many people, um, sisters, brothers, I've equally been hurt in return by them as well. Um, still getting, getting over something that happened in the 80s. I know, heck of a long time ago. Uh, by the person I used to study with. Yeah, after all this time, I find out that he had a shepherding call and during that shepherding call, he told nothing but a pack of lies. And the reason why I know that now after all this time is because I met the girl concerned at my uh, father's funeral and uh, she confirmed what was previously just a rumour that he had in fact lied before four or five judicial elders and the elders chose to believe him and not the girls and not the family and that is to their eternal shame and I feel like going to that congregation and reminding them of that because it's really hurt me because this is a really lovely lovely person uh, who never went back to the meetings after that because uh, she was uh, she was wronged in that way and who can blame her and that's what I said to her I says well I don't blame you at all for not going back how dare them treat you like that and then uh, shun your whole family and treat you like lepers but that's exactly what the elders in that congregation did my old congregation um, Bury outside Manchester Yes, shame, elders, shame that you didn't get it right. Where was Jehovah's Spirit? I thought Jehovah's Spirit was supposed to direct your decisions so that you never got anything wrong, but you got this wrong. 
And what else did you get wrong that I don't know about? But I can prove this now, and maybe I will use it as some kind of ammunition one day. But for now, I shall leave it. And uh, thank you, people. And everybody have a great time. Bye-bye.